Tonight on America's Dumbest Criminals. These fugitives think they're setting sail for a good time, but a sinking feeling is about to set in. And this is no piñata, but is there a surprise inside for this would-be car thief? Things are seldom as they seem, and never as crooks dream. Here on America's Dumbest Criminals. It's a little something unfair here. What is the problem? <laughs> well, I checked the show rundown, and it says Debbie and Daniel enter wearing boas across their shoulders. OK, yeah. yours comes from Victoria's Secret. Mine came from the Garden of Eden. <laughs> okay. Actually, I don't think you're wearing a boa. I think that's a python. Oh, well, yeah, I feel so much better now. Oh, you're not scared, <laughs> are you? Me, are you kidding? No. <laughs> We could swap. Great. Oh, that'd be swell. Yeah, I'd go from looking like Alice Cooper to Ethel Merman. Give me a break. <laughs> and I'd have to start belting out show tunes. I'd, I'm not prepared for that, no. I think you're chicken. <laughs> the lady in the ostrich feathers is calling me chicken. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. No, I'm completely comfortable with this representation of pure evil draped across my shoulders. <laughs> But just for safekeeping, you know, I think I'll, I'll, t I'll turn him over to someone more qualified to deal with his mood swings. <laughs> He's squeezing. He's squeezing. He's squeezing. He's squeezing. There you go. Oh! oh. OK, thank you, player. Wait thank a minute. You. you don't have the nerve that a cute 17-year-old girl does? What? Uh huh? You think this is scary? You should see her boyfriend, too. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get to a story about snakes in just a little bit. But first, we turn from boas to boats. Ooh, these people boarded a boat bound for trouble, even without Gilligan being aboard. Join us aboard a ship full of fools who were caught on camera. I spoke with the chief of police and uh, asked him about trying to clear up some of our old outstanding warrants. We decided to do a cash sweepstakes. Uh, we decided to plan it on the 4th of July weekend. We utilized the, uh, a restaurant that was on the lake to uh, have a nice atmosphere. We created uh, all of these um, letterheads and mail merged them with a number of different uh, names from our files. They had a phone line set up for people to call to confirm it, because I know a lot of people called up the police department. What they would just tell them was, uh, yeah, sure, just come on down. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, legitimate as far as we know. It's being held. Lake Chagaga Gog. Gog, Gog. Man, Chaga Gog. There's uh, quite a few Gogs in there. Chabunga Gog. We call it Webster Lake. There's only one road in and one road out to the, uh, to the restaurants. We were trying to figure out how we were going to transport everybody out. After brainstorming with the uh, chief and some other officers, we decided that we would use uh, potty boats and ship people across the lake to Memorial Beach, where we had a sheriff's department van waiting. We even uh, went to the extent of ordering a cake from a local supermarket uh, in red, white, and blue with congratulations with Liberty Sweepstakes winners printed on it. We brought people down one at a time behind the re restaurant uh, under the pretense uh, that we were going to take their picture by the water as they were presented with this check. We well, sprang it on them. It was amazing how many people said, uh, I knew it was kind of hinky, but I just had to come down for the money. And all they got was a free boat ride. Overall, we were the uh, real jackpot winners of this uh, sweepstakes. We netted 32 people in all. How far would you go to feed your addiction? Well, in this case, we're not talking about heroin or crack or butter pecan ice cream. <laughs> we're talking about a technology junkie, a guy who got his fix from cable TV and 1-900 phone lines. Yeah. See how far we've sunk as a society with a media maven who provides something to remember me by. Numerous reports came in where neighbors were reporting that uh, they had 900 
calls coming in on their home phones, unexplained, couldn't figure out what was going on. Shortly thereafter, another report came in. A woman comes home, walks in the door, and she notices a stranger, a white male, sitting in her living room, shoes off, watching TV. She startles the suspect. He gets up, grabs his stuff, and runs out the back door. Well, he leaves one of the shoes behind. We do a sketch later on, and shortly thereafter, we have another sighting. A woman sees a young man in the backyard, so uh, she calls the police. Uh, myself and my partner take a hunch, and we just go over to the neighborhood where he's last spotted. So we, we do a little surveillance. We're sitting out there in our, in our unmarked cruiser, sitting there for about two hours, and lo and behold, here, here comes our suspect out between two houses. And of all the places he picked uh, to come out, he walks right in front of our car. And he's looking around to see if anybody's looking. And we're, we're sitting right in front of him. When he turns his head to the last we, we duck and we're in the car and we're, we're, we're thinking, this guy's made us. So he gets into the car, into his car, thinking he's, he's made it, just broke into a couple homes. And as he's pulling out, we stop, we try to stop. And then uh, he takes off. He, he just, just flies down the road, takes two blocks, uh, ends up right at his house, parks right in the middle of the road, runs into his house, we're right behind him, shuts the door, locks the door on us. Then shortly after we get into the house and he, he admits to 26 burglaries where he's breaking into these people's homes, using their, their uh, phone to dial 900 numbers. And then I, I asked him, I said, uh, whatever happened to that shoe that, uh, that you happen to have? And walks in his bedroom, pulls out the shoe, has the matching shoe, he kept it. When you leave your shoe behind and you walk in front of two cops, you're bound to get caught. In West Virginia, it's perfectly legal to take roadkill home for supper. When you're a drug dealer, you live life in the fast lane. But every once in a while, even drug dealers need to take the off-ramp for some downtime. What happens next provides one of America's dumbest excuses. Here in Ocala, we work under the community policing philosophy, and under that philosophy, we often ask for our, our citizens, our residents, and our community to team up with us to help us catch drug dealers. Just a few months ago, uh, one of our residents called us, told us that there was somebody in a car outside her home selling drugs and also using drugs. Upon my arrival in the area, I saw a guy that fit the description. Well, he didn't see me, because he was asleep. In one hand was a bag of marijuana, in the other hand was a vial filled with crack cocaine. So what I did was I slid the marijuana out of, his, out of one hand and I tested it and it tested positive. Then I went back and the young man was still asleep. So I slid the other substance out of the other hand and it tested positive for cocaine. I then went back to the car and I woke him up. Sir, I need you to wake up. I need you to get out of the car, you're under arrest. <laughs> and he told me that he'd been asleep there for a while and someone must have put it in his hands while he was asleep. In our next story, the culprit is a real snake in every sense of the word. Don't believe me? Take a look at our blue light special. We got a call about a subject in a lady's driveway, and when asked to describe him, the lady said it was about nine foot long, had slick skin and brown eyes. Uh, she says, as long as my car. I'm not scared of snakes, but that's the reason I don't mess with snakes. And so I wasn't too happy about finding a nine-foot snake myself, so I called the fire department. The firemen started drilling holes in the floor joists of this lady's house. We were down to the last floor joist. One of the firemen finished drilling the holes, and I saw him jump back. And we found the snake and we had no way of getting it out. I squirted the snake with uh, pepper gas. And when I did, the snake just sort of went wild. Its tail flipped out, and three volunteer firemen grabbed the snake by the tail. And when the snake let go, it let go all at once, and it fell in just a group of firemen. So everybody takes off running, and he starts rearing up like he's going to bite. So my other policeman went in and shot at it twice, and uh, I went and shot the snake in the head and killed it. And I believe right now, if we'd have had a video of that, we'd be rich people. <laughs> On the old 
TV show Candid Camera, you never knew when host Alan Funt was going to appear from behind a two-way mirror. I think you'll see some striking similarities reflected in our next story. Take a good look. Coming to work, and uh, I was wearing my uniform with a, a civilian coat over the top, and I was stopping off in the morning to one of our favorite spots, Donut World, to uh, pick up uh, some donuts for the, the men and women of our unit before we started the day off. I went inside the donut store, and I had my civilian coat over the top, and when I uh, turned around after I got the donuts and the coffee, there was someone breaking into my auto. So I took my coat off, put the donuts down, didn't want to do that, but went outside and tapped the guy on the shoulder and had a coat hanger going in the side of my car. And I asked him what he was doing. He said he lost his keys and it was his uncle's car and he, uh, yeah, he had to get in the car right away to get it back to his uncle. And it, we had a few words out there, but the, the conversation was over that he was not my nephew. The equipment in there was police equipment in there and he was under arrest. And now, with news found tangled in the World Wide Web, here's Daniel with ADC Headlines. They were up a creek without a paddle. In Washington State, several Boeing aircraft employees successfully stole a life raft from a 747 plane and soon thereafter took it for a float on a nearby river. But their hearts sank when they noticed a Coast Guard helicopter hovering above. Apparently, none of them realize that an emergency locator automatically activates when a raft is inflated. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. You know how young guys love to impress the girls with flashy cars? Get this, a 15-year-old boy in Middletown, Connecticut was driving a different vehicle every time he visited his girlfriend. <laughs> oh, Bobby, cool Mustang. Oh, Bobby, I love your new blazer. Whoa, smoking you go, Bobby. <laughs> Apparently, she wasn't savvy enough to figure out that his hot cars had been hot-wired. In fact, the young car hood went through 16 vehicles in two months. Police caught up with Romeo when they traced his cell phone calls made from the vehicles to naive Juliet's house. And now, wherefore art her Romeo? Juvenile detention is my guess, huh? It was a tense moment in the courtroom. The district attorney motioned to the two defendants and asked the victim of an armed robbery who was seated on the stand which one of these two men had the shotgun. Truly, without thinking, one of the defendants quickly raised his hand. <laughs> in a feeble attempt at covering for his feeble-minded client, the defendant's attorney stood and said, Your Honor, may the record reflect that my client needs to use the restroom. <laughs> And that closes the file on ABC Headlines. News rips from somewhere near the back of your local newspaper. Debbie? Okay, stop me if you've heard this one. A priest, an old lady, and a crook are stopped at a roadblock. You haven't heard it? Well, instead of me giving you the punchline, let's go to Sergeant Norman Denton in Carlsbad, New Mexico for his special delivery. New Mexico has a... A law allows us to do driver's license, insurance, and registration checks, and I was at one of those roadblocks. Well, three cars came in on my, my road. As I was looking at them, I knew the first one. My dad used to own a funeral home, and he was a Catholic priest, so I was talking with him. And as I was talking with him, the next two vehicles pulled up. One was an old lady in a brand new Crown Victoria, and then what I call a scumbag. Uh, I knew from looking at him, he was a doper. So I thought, well, I just kind of set him up. So talking to the priest, uh, I said, Father, do you mind if I uh, check your vehicle out? And he, and he said, well, Norman, why? And I said, well, I really don't have time to tell you now, but I'll tell you later. So he opens the back door, we pull the back seat out. I open the trunk up, look through it, put everything back, and I said, I'll call you later on and tell you about it. He drives off and the old lady pulls up. Brand new car, has a sticker in the window. And I said, ma'am, you know, we're uh, thinking about getting some of these Crown Vicks for police cars. Do you mind if we look your vehicle over? And of course, older people love to help cops. <laughs> Boy, she jumped out of the car, opened the back doors. I look inside, she opened the trunk, we pulled the spare tire out and I put it all back. And I thank her. And I was just standing there and watch her drive off while the scumbag pulls up and I just turned around and looked at him and said, hi. And he's sitting there behind the wheel just shaking and, and sweating. He goes, officer, I, I knew you'd check me up, so I know you're gonna get me. And he reaches down the hands, but just under three pounds of marijuana. <laughs> it's marijuana, I'm sorry. All I said was hi to him. That was the easiest drug bust I ever got. Yeah. 
When the commotion started at a large toy store, the employees must have thought the rock'em sock'em robots had come to life. But that's not the case in this case. But to find out just who was getting their blocks knocked off, let's go to North Miami Beach, Florida. This is a story about two dumb criminals that we found at uh, Toys R Us in our city. I call them Dumb and Dumber. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was uh, the night of uh, December 24th, the day before Christmas, and uh, these two brothers decided that they were going to rob Toys R Us. They went into the store while the store was very crowded, and they went into the men's room. They pushed up the ceiling tiles, and they climbed up into the, into the roof, and they hid up on top of an air conditioning duct. Well, they were sitting there for quite a period of time waiting, and they started talking in a low voice, but they started arguing with each other. The stock boy who was in the, in the stock room right next to the bathroom heard voices from the ceiling, so he called his store manager over, and the store manager came in, and they both looked up into the ceiling, and they heard voices from the ceiling. So what they didn't know what was going on, so they called the police. We get there, and the officer comes in, and he's listening to the, the, the store manager. And they push up the ceiling tiles, they bring in a canine dog, and they say, okay, this is the police, we know you're up there, come on down. Well, nothing happens, so they, they get the dog barking and say, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna send up the dog if you don't come down. Now, can you see the canine officer throwing his dog in the air? It would never happen, but the dog's barking. They got scared, they came down. They had radio, a walkie-talkie, and they were in communication with somebody in the parking lot. And as soon as that person, who was probably in the getaway car, saw the police, he was dumb, dumb, and dumbest because he took off and left his friend sitting in the store. Uh, it, was, it was quite a, quite a crime, uh, a crime that almost was pulled off. <laughs> In Wyoming, it's illegal to take a picture of a rabbit during the month of June. You've heard the expression, he was so drunk he couldn't see straight. Well, we can go you one better. It really happened in Logan, Utah, and we're not making this up. Uh, I was on patrol here in Logan and working the Center Street area, and this car came off of Center Street, and it was all over the road having trouble working a clutch and the gas pedal and a new driver and then there was no traffic so I followed it for about a block and a half and it just maintained this driving pattern and uh, I was able to do a traffic stop on it uh, a couple of blocks down the road on First West. I approached the vehicle and made contact with the driver and uh, detected an odor of alcohol coming from the car and then I recognized the parties and uh, I'd known them from prior contacts and uh, asked the driver to step out and started asking him why he was driving. And he began to inform me that uh, it was because he and his buddy had been out drinking and we, they had determined that uh, he had had the least amount of alcohol and he'd be the safest driver. And uh, I confirmed that story with the other passenger and then went back to the driver and said, I appreciate you know the integrity you're showing and uh, your care and concern for the citizens of Logan, but you're blind. Why are you driving and how did you drive this car? And he says, well, we thought that my partner was the most intoxicated, so he would tell me right or left or more gas or brake or... And so they had determined that a blind guy driving this car away from the bar would be a lot better than the drunk guy driving it. They both had too much to drink and they both ended up being arrested for intoxication and DUI. Now I feel like Medusa. <laughs> and I feel like Ava Gabor on Green Acres. Oliver! This bow was definitely a better look for you. Yeah, no, nah, I know. I, I think, think it's it... time that we said some very fast goodbyes, please. What, what are you nervous? Yes! Come on, you know in the wild he eats wombats bigger than you. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. huge. Come on. Come on. Where is he? I love Where's watching you squirm up. He's, he's just right there. Hey, he my a great time. Snakes yeah. in the hood, okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. if you've got a lean on a story or you just can't wait for more state-of-the-art stupidity, hurry and write this down. Visit our website, www.dumbcrimes.com. He's hurry. tightening. He's starting <laughs> to tighten. We want to thank you for joining us and extend our gratitude to the law enforcement officers who make this show possible. Every day they lay their lives on the line to keep us safe from the stupidity of would-be criminals. Isn't that a nice thing? <laughs> huh? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> would you like to discuss it at length? No. Uh, come on. As uh, always, we hope that we've all learned from others' mistakes. But if you haven't, we just might see you next week on America's Dumbest Criminal. <laughs> bye bye.